Hi folks, uh, one more video tonight. We're going to talk about solving triangles again, uh, but this time some of the complications that can come up when you have three sides and no angles. All right, so let's say I have this triangle uh, right here and it's got sides 10, 9, and 2. And I've... Oh, 2. And I've chosen these sides specifically because uh, those sides make it really clear that this angle right here is going to be greater than, not less than, but greater than 90 degrees. Uh, that angle is probably going to be something like 160 or 170. Uh, this isn't even drawn to scale. Um, but something really strange can happen if you try to solve for this triangle in the wrong way. So here's what I mean by the wrong way. Uh, say that I want to solve for this angle. Uh, I'm going to call this like little c and this angle called big C, and I use the law of cosines to solve for that angle little c. So uh, here's what that would look like. Okay, so this is not wrong. Uh, I've correctly solved for C and got C is about 10.475 degrees. I am for the purpose, no, I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep it to three decimal places just because that's kind of our uh, standard here in Math 4. So even though it's kind of a pain, we're gonna keep it to three decimal places here. Okay, but what I really wanna do is use that now to find this angle, which I'm just gonna call angle X. Now this is the angle X that we observed earlier is absolutely guaranteed to be bigger than 100 or uh, bigger than 90. Look at that thing. Uh, but what if I use the law of sines here? So that is equal to 0.909. And then to find x, we have to use sine inverse. And so even with using the calculator to keep all the decimal digits of precision, I get that x is 65.3756 degrees. And there's just no way that that can be right. Absolutely no way. And here's the problem. The problem was in that very last step when I used the function sine inverse, right? So I had sine of x equals 0.909. And I had to take the sine inverse of both sides. And I did everything correctly and my calculator's in the right mode, but my calculator for some reason gave me an answer that is clearly wrong. Well, here's what's going on. Do you remember that sine inverse, and you may remember this from last year, or uh, you might have remember this from the end of chapter four, if we have covered it before, uh, that sine inverse of x has outputs in quadrant one and quadrant four, or angles from negative 90 degrees up to 90 degrees, or in radians, negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. You don't have to know radians to do this section. Um, and that's exactly what's happening here, is I took an angle that I knew to be obtuse, but I used sine inverse on it. Your calculator doesn't know what the triangle is. Your calculator can't see that work. So your calculator is saying, oh, you mean uh, the angle 65 degrees right here even though that's not the angle you wanted. 
So it's a problem with sine inverse is like where the problem lies. Now, there's a couple fixes for this. Uh, one of the fixes is to try to avoid solving that angle with sine inverse. Because remember that cosine inverse of x has outputs in quadrants one and quadrant two, which translates to angles from zero degrees to 180 degrees, or from zero radians up to pi radians and radians. And what's nice about that is that those are the possible angles in a triangle. So I want to try the same problem again, same triangle. I've just moved the other work to the other side there. And what I'm going to do is find x using, uh, find x directly using law of cosines, and that should give us the true value of x. So here's the work for that. about 114.624 degrees. And that's a much more reasonable answer. And so now I've got two angles of this triangle I've solved with law of cosines. I could, of course, find the uh, third angle by subtracting from 180, and then the triangle would be solved. So this is obviously kind of a problem. Like, if you solve a triangle using just all the tools at your disposal, um, but you're not paying careful attention, you might end up doing something that causes this, this error, this uh, wrong angle answer uh, of 65 compared to 114. And specifically something you'll notice is that if I take the correct answer, 114, and add it to the uh, incorrect answer, 65.376, and I keep all the decimals uh, roughly, I get 180. So it seems like if I got that wrong answer, it's because I told the calculator to find me an angle, and it found me an angle right here. But what I really wanted was the angle that is its supplement, that makes 180 with it. Um, but I needed to know that. Like, I wouldn't have known that uh, just by looking at the work or anything, um, unless I maybe made this sketch in the triangle. So here are some ways that you can avoid having this problem. And remember, this problem only happens if you're solving a triangle where you're given three sides, which we kind of shorthand call an SSS, or side-side-side triangle. The first strategy that I think everyone should just use is use the law of cosines on the biggest angle to start with. My mistake was using law of cosines on this angle down here that was going to be 10 degrees. Um, law, any law would have found that. That angle isn't the one that's the problem. It was this angle that had the potential to be problematic. So I could have known ahead of time because 10 is the largest side, that only one angle has that potentially problematic, and it was that one. So I should have just gone with this as my first step. Um, that's your first strategy. Now, sometimes maybe you just don't want to do that, or you forgot to do that, or uh, maybe it's a word problem and it's not realistic to do that. That, I think, could happen sometimes where you just don't want to find that specific angle first. Um, so then uh, what you could instead do is step two, which is, Use law of cosines to find, whoa, you know, a small angle, like that one. And then instead of going straight to the biggest angle, use law of sines or cosines to find the other small angle, right? A triangle can only have one obtuse angle. Every other angle has to be acute. So use all the laws to find all the angles you know are acute. Um, and then you won't have any problems so, because to find that largest angle, you can just do 180 minus x minus y, the other two angles. And so uh, that's always going to be foolproof. Um, and then a third check that you can actually do is just check if the triangle is going to be obtuse before you start, right? This only happens with angles that are greater than 180. So say I gave you a triangle, and you just kind of sketched it, and you didn't, you know, not to scale. And I told you that the sides were 3, 4, 6. Well, what could you do? How could you check? Uh, one thing you could do is check the two shortest sides in the Pythagorean theorem. Ooh, that's Pythagorean theorem. 
and say, hey, how does that compare to 6 squared? So 9 plus 16 is 25. 6 squared is 36, which is larger than 25. So that means that this triangle, that angle, has to be more than 90. And of course, if you get exactly equal, then that's at exactly 90. And if for some reason you had gotten that the sum of the squares of the legs was smaller, then that would be an acute triangle. And so you kind of knowing what case you're in can tell you if you need to worry about this um, at all. So I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. Um, I'm not gonna show any more examples, but just always remember if you're doing three sides, consider that that triangle might be obtuse. And I think the best move is just to always start by looking for the longest side and finding the angle opposite the longest side first. And if you fail to do that, uh, there's a couple of other strategies that you can do too. All right, I think that's it. Uh, we'll end this video here. Uh, practice your problems, shoot me an email with any of your questions, and I'll see you guys next time.